that is still the TMP Special Edition Spyderco Resilience. TMP Blue, Cerakote Burnt Bronze, sitting in the background for the KRV. I'm going to start off by reading from the Crucible data sheet on CPM M4. Here it goes. Prepare to be bored. I'm kidding. I won't, I won't read that much. If I read the whole thing, yeah, dudes, you would be bored. I mean, that's a lot of data. I'll just read this as a reminder on M4. Well, actually, it's all the CPM steels because it applies to all of them. And I'm going to show you the knife as we're talking about it. The CPM process produces very homogeneous, high-quality steel characterized by superior dimensional stability, grindability, and toughness compared to steels produced by conventional processes. And again, we see their little graphic here showing the homogeneous nature of the carbide distribution in a CPM steel. Now we have yet another awesome collectible limited edition Spyderco blade with CPM M4. In fact, it is one of my all-time favorite Spyderco blades. That is the Manix 2. Welcome to the TMP announcement of this BHQ edition of the Manix 2. Get it while you can. They're selling fast. They do not need me to promote it. It sells all by itself. The catalog number is C101GM4 Papa 2. Very confusing. In natural G10, I've always called it Jade, but that's the natural coloration of the G10. This is a stainless steel lined version of the Manix 2 designed by Eric Lesser. And by the way, it comes with a very cool insert sheet on it. I want to read this to you, speaking of getting bored. I like how they did this. Uh, Spyderco has never done this before. So I've, you know, I've made several announcement vids for BHQ because I love those guys uh, on different blades. Like for instance, a couple months ago, I did an announcement video on this one. It is the Military M4, also same steel, C36 GM4 M4 Papa. Military, same coloration. Awesome. I talked about that in the announcement video. Nice size comparison, by the way. But here it goes. It says, congratulations on your purchase of this limited edition exclusive version of the Manix 2. Special configuration. I'm going to jump through this. Spyderco designed this produced for a single wholesale customer or distributor. This distinctive expression of the Manix 2, let me show you the knife while I'm blabbering, features high performance CPM M4 blade steel and natural G10 handle scale, specially manufactured for Blade HQ. Machine from CPM M4, a special purpose high speed tool steel produced by particle metallurgy process. Yep, just introduced that again. A popular material for high performance custom blades and knives used in competitive comp uh, cutting. It's advanced alloy composition, high vanadium content, and extremely fine grain structure give it exceptional wear resistance and toughness. In knife blades, these properties translate to outstanding edge retention and superior impact resistance. Amen, brother. This knife's plain edge, that's a trademark phrase from Spyderco, blade is full flat ground. Thank you very much, Spyderco. I love that. For low friction cutting performance and proudly features... Spyderco's signature trademark round hole for swift ambidextrous one-handed opening. Another reason that Spyderco remains probably my overall favorite brand. Because I can put a dang zip tie in it. Cost me like nothing. And now I have a waveable knife from the box. I'm almost to the point now, dudes, if my knife doesn't come out waved from the pocket, I'm not really interested. Unless it's an auto. I'll, I'll, I'll give a little bit of you know slack to the auto. It continues, not to be outdone, the distinctive handle of this knife features a textured natural D10 scale. The near translucent quality of this material showcases the knife skeletonized stainless steel liners and high strength ball bearing lock mechanism while providing a secure non-slip grip. To ensure ease of carry, blah, 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 stainless steel clip. Two versions of this uh, remarkable knife have been created by Blade HQ. One is the one you're looking at here, the satin finished blade, and the other one will boast a non-reflective DLC blade coating with matching black clip and hardware. I think that version's coming, by the way. And, and by the way, I'm done. Are you bored? I actually like it. I, that's why I'm reading it. I think what they wrote there is right on target. It's rare that I'll read the promotional material from a, a company, unless I feel it's accurate and interesting, and this fills both boxes. So it covered a lot too. I mean, I love the ball bearing lock on the Manix. 
I've always said that. It's strong, fully ambidextrous, easily operated. Oh my gosh, it's such a cool knife. Very cool. Stainless steel backspacer right here. I wished it was titanium. I do. Um, in this version, you know. But that would probably add cost. And look at how skeletonized that liner is, dudes. Oh my gosh. Spyderco finally got it. I mean, I was giving them grief for years. Hey, if you're going to skeletonize, skeletonize. Let's get it done. I, you know, I'm not a big fan of stainless steel liners usually, but when they're there, this is how you do it. I mean, that is like perfect. Another upside to doing it this way is that you can get the property of translucent. Uh, translucence, I should say, of the natural G10. I'm not, let's see if this works. So I'm going to show you like that. See that? That is cool. So that, it's kind of knife art, really, when you skeletonize to that level. Awesome. I could do this all day, dude. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, it's fun. You can still take this knife apart, just like we've always said. Lockup is just total perfection. We'd expect that. Blade centering, perfect. If you take it apart and put it back together, it may not be. And where'd that resilience go? Right here. So Doodle takes those apart and to get them centered up again, sometimes it's a chore. Sometimes it's a process. Yep. Big old lanyard hole. Two-way positionable stainless steel hourglass clip. Not my favorite in, favorite in the lineup. Uh, but we've been using it and seeing it for years. Here it is, Cerakoted again in burnt bronze. My favorite in the lineup is which one? TMP knife, guys. Of the Spyderco lineup. I've said it lots, see if you remember. And I actually finally found the knife that I was trying to find uh, earlier. And it just fell down. Here it is. It is my... Manix 2 lightweight, it, by the way, 2.9 ounces. Holy cow, that's light. And it was uh, in one of my motorcycle pants. <laughs> that's where it was. I had a tabletop review. I was like, man, I don't know where my S110 version of the Manix 2 lightweight went. And I was really bummed because this is not an inexpensive knife. And I was like, I don't want to lose that. I love that knife. Found it, motorcycle pants. Also wearing a very excellent steel CPM S110, of course. Same ball bearing lock, no stainless steel liners, which I prefer. Don't need a backspacer because it's a FRN handle, volcano grip on it. And this is a clip. That is my favorite clip that Spyderco makes. It doesn't add weight, takes thick tactical pants, looks great. I just love it. Now, is it second cool? I mean, no. This is a user knife. It's, I wouldn't say it's second cool, although I really love... Uh, what would you call it? The slate blue handle on this version. See, I'm wearing a zip zip tie on that sucker. One thing I want to show you about this CPM M4 that I really, really like, and this is a second cool thing. Look at the machining on it. How clean the machining is. And we read that at the outset. Remember it was saying the grindability of CPM M4? It really machines so clean. It doesn't have like those vertical striations sometimes we see in other Spyderco blades. And then we'll, I'll show you the S110 version. That's kind of a feature of what I'm saying. See, you just kind of see some striations coming down here. Not a big deal. I'm not saying that it like annoys me, but uh, either I want a high polish, maybe a stone wash finish. I think the M4 is probably the best finish on any of the Manic series that I've seen yet. Another thing I really love is the jumping. Oh my gosh, in this version, the BHQ one, uh, it is so sharp. Here, I'll take my glove off. It, it's it's perfect. And again, this is something I've ranted about in all my KRVs since I started TMP. I'm like, if you're going to do jimping, do it right. Otherwise, don't do it at all. I mean, that's perfect jimping. Finger choil below, also perfect jimping. I mean, it's such a control knife, isn't it? The Manix. Also perfect jumping in the S110 version. Super, super sick. By the way, this one's going to be heavier. Uh, 4.2 ounces, but man, that's totally in the ballpark. Totally is. Uh, I love that ball bearing lock too. Spring plunger drives a ball bearing down that ramp to lock the blade. It's just so smooth. Deploy it in so many different ways. That's a great knife. 
So this is a limited edition, of course, from Blade HQ. It will be gone before you know it, and then it will go into guys' collections. I doubt, if we talk philosophy of use, which, by the way, is EDC and tactical and food preparation knife and gift knife. Ooh, I covered that fast. Uh, I think guys are just going to collect it. I really do. Just like this military version, because it's just, there's not that many of them out there, and it's Jake Knutson doing these. He's the one that uh, like makes all these super cool additions for Blade HQ. And uh, it's a knife I already rave about, so I'm more than happy to give him some publicity on it. Uh, get it while you can. Link below. The Blade HQ Special Edition, designed by Eric Glesser, and then a collaboration with Blade HQ, of course. Natural G10, G10 CPM M4 Manix 2. Nothing fancy. See ya.